Football Manager is finally back on the channel. Welcome everyone and thanks for joining me for episode one of my Manchester United career on FM19. A lot of you guys have been asking for it and it's finally here. It's certainly been a while since I've done some FM content, since I did an FM Man United save and it is good to be back. Now with this save things are going to be a little different simply because we're starting episode one on the 25th of January 2019. I've already gone ahead and played well pretty much the first half of the season that's because I wanted to get a feel for the new FM. Some new features have been added which I'm sure you're all aware of now from training to tactics and formations and, and also I've been really enjoying this save so far more so than previous FMs. I did start a thread on Twitter but it just didn't feel right. I just felt so I had to do a series here on YouTube for you guys. So anyway, this episode I'm going to be taking you guys through all of our results so far this season starting in July in pre-season. Before pre-season kicked off, July saw the return of Gary Neville to Old Trafford. He is now my assistant manager. Head of youth development is still Nicky Butt. Michael Carrick and Kira McKenna will remain as coaches, but we also have one new addition to our coaching setup, and that is Roy Keane. He agreed to sign on as a coach. This is great news for the season ahead. So our first game in the Asia Tour ended in a 1-1 draw against Shanghai. Then we played Beijing. We won 3-2 with Damian Chung and Barlow on the score sheet. Up next, we won 4-0. Performances started to improve here for United. Then we were up against Fenerbahce. This was our first game lost in pre-season. And to finish up July, we won 2-1 in this game. First game of August was our final pre-season game. We drew 2-2. So with pre-season done and with the new Premier League season looming, this was the Premier League preview. The Buckies had tipped us for third spot in the Premier League. 7-2 there with Manchester City retaining their title. Will that be the case though? So this is my formation, my tactic that I start the season with. A 4-3-3. It's a custom vertical tiki taka uh, tactical style. Gotta move that ball quickly, get it going forwards as well. Instead of playing sideways and backwards passes, we will be playing the Manchester United away in this FM save. It wasn't the most convincing of starts to the new season for Manchester United. Our first game finished in a draw away to Huddlesfield. Marcus Rashford drawing us level in the 23rd minute. Up next was our first home game of the new season against Bournemouth. Again, it finished 1-1 and a Herrera this time with the goal. We finished the month of August on a high, beating West Ham 1-0 away from home. West Ham failed to register a shot on target. Jesse Lingard with the only goal. We start the new month the right way. A 5-0 thrashing against Cardiff. They failed to even have a shot on goal. Up next, we travel to the Molyneux and we beat Wolves 1-0 thanks to a goal from Lukaku. The Champions League group stages started in September and our first game away to Atletico Madrid was a tough one. We lost 1-0. Our unbeaten run in the Premier League continued as we smashed Crystal Palace 3-0 with goals from Lukaku and Herrera. And then we had the EFL Cup third round tie away to Hull City. That game finished 1-0 but it was an opportunity to play some fringe players. And then we beat Chelsea 2-0 in the Premier League at Old Trafford with goals from Lingard and Lukaku. The perfect way to end September. Just like the start of September, we started October in similar fashion. Another 5-0 win, this time in the Champions League against Opel. First it was Chelsea that fell victim to an informed Manchester United. And then it was Tottenham. They lost 3-0 at Wembley. Obviously, Frankie de Jong getting sent off certainly helped our case, but Romelu Lukaku once again was on fire. The big games just kept on coming. Up next in the Premier League, we travelled to Anfield to take on Liverpool, one of our biggest rivals. Liverpool took the lead through Jordan Henderson in the 32nd minute. Chris Smalling, in the dying embers of the game, headed in an equaliser from a corner, making it 1-1. 
Victoria Plitzen certainly gave a good account of themselves at home against Manchester United in the third game of the group stages, but it just wasn't enough. We won 2-1. Our 10th game of the new Premier League season saw us return to Old Trafford to take on Fulham. It was another impressive performance. It finished 5-0. Lukaku with a hat-trick and Angel Gomez also on the score sheet. So with 10 games in, we got a good idea of how things were shaping up for the rest of the season. United in second, a point behind league leaders, Arsenal. Bad memories of playing MK Dons away. At this time, it was Manchester United that walked away as winners. It finished 1-0 there. November was a successful month for Romelu Lukaku. He picked up another two goals in the Premier League for Manchester United in this away game at the King Power Stadium against Leicester City. It finished 4-2. The Champions League returned to Old Trafford in our next game against Victoria Plisson. This time it finished 2-0. A good clean sheet for Sergio Romero in goal. Everton were our next victims at Old Trafford. They lost 3-1 which saw former Everton striker Lukaku on the score sheet. Up next in the Premier League, it was the big one. It was the showdown at the Emirates between Arsenal and Manchester United, and we just about got away with it. It was Alexander Lacazette that put the ball into his own net, which saw United walk away with three points. Atletico Madrid at this point were the only team to beat us so far this season. We had to ensure that didn't happen again at Old Trafford, and it didn't. We steamrolled them. It finished 4-1. Our first game of the Christmas period was at home to Southampton, finished all square. Then it was on to the Manchester derby at the Etihad. It finished 1-0 to United and this for me has to be the performance so far of the season. They failed to register a shot on target and this was a team that fielded the likes of Aguero, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Silva and De Bruyne and Fernandinho and yet they couldn't test David De Gea. That game also marked Romelu Lukaku's 15th goal in the Premier League. 15 goals already scored and just a couple of days into December. You can see here in the Premier League, 15 games, 15 goals, a goal a game. It's one hell of a record and we've still got another half of the season to go. He's in fine form at the moment. Watford were the next team that failed to unlock Manchester United's defence. It finished 3-0 at Old Trafford. With that 1-0 loss against Atletico Madrid at the start of the Champions League group stages, we went on to punish Opal 7-0. Our unbeaten run finally came to an end in the Premier League, finished 2-1 to Burnley at Turf Moor. We bounced back though with a 1-0 win over Liverpool at Old Trafford in the Carabao Cup quarter-final. A game which frustrated Jurgen Klopp, even to the point where he walked out of his post-match press conference. Yes, we lost 2-1 to Burnley, but we responded the right way in our next game in the Premier League, beating Huddersfield 4-0. St James's Park hasn't always been the best of places for United. Finished 3-2 to Newcastle. Then our final game of December, finished 1-0 at Old Trafford against Brighton. Happy New Year! And we started it the right way with a win away to Bournemouth. It finished 2-1. The FA Cup is finally here. We were drawn against Carlisle. We smashed them 4-0. It was then time for the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg against West Ham. We lost 2-1. Then we played West Ham again. And we beat them 3-0 this time in the Premier League. With it being January, with the transfer window wide open, Marcus Rojo decided to leave Old Trafford for life in China. Got to feel sorry for the Cardiff keeper at this point. We managed to put four past them this time away from home. The trip to London in the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg was a good one. We're into the Carabao Cup final. And there we go. We're all up to date then. So, as you can see, starting in August, we had all those results. Our first game lost this season was away to Atletico Madrid. It was a, a tricky one, that. But I thought to myself, if we can get past this game, yes, it's always going to be difficult away against Atletico Madrid. Then we've got Opal and Victoria Plisson that we can take out our frustrations on. And we did. And we have now qualified for the knockout stages of the Champions League and in first spot too. We did win our group. I was very happy with that. Elsewhere though, Spurs and Barcelona are through after winning their group. Level on points as well. PSG, Inter Milan, they're through. Valencia just missing out. Liverpool and Dortmund advancing through to the knockout stages. There's our group in Group D. Group E, Porto and Galatasaray, they're through. Group F, Bayern Munich, as expected. 
They are through along with Roma, Real Madrid and Dynamo Kiev are through and finally in Group H, Manchester City and Monaco advance. So if I go back to fixtures, actually I can show from overview stages, I think it's, uh, yeah, first knockout round. You can see that we've been drawn against Dortmund in the knockout stages, that first leg away from home. I'm yet to play it as we are picking up things on the 25th of January. Some tasty fixtures though in this knockout stage draw, Barcelona against City, Atletico Madrid against Liverpool, Dynamo Kiev against Spurs. They've probably got the easiest game to be honest, Tottenham. And finally, Galatasaray at home in the first leg against Real Madrid. What a challenge. What a mountain for them to climb in that game. So, there we go. We are pretty much all up to date. Our next game in the next episode will be the FA Cup fourth round away to Arsenal. We've got that to look forward to. But how about the month of February? Look at the amount of games we've got there. The trip to Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Then we've got Dortmund in the first leg of the uh, knockout stages. Then we've got Spurs in the league. Then we have to play them again in the Carabao Cup final at Wembley. And then we finish up Feb at home to Liverpool. What a game that is going to be as it finished 1-1 in the reverse fixture at Anfield earlier this season. So we've got quite a lot of good games to look forward to uh, for the second half of the season. Let me just show you the league table then as it currently stands. So 23 games in. We are top by four points. Liverpool following close behind. They are starting to uh, find their stride at the moment. The likes of Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, obviously leading the way for them. But everyone is where you would expect them. Top six, top seven is some of the stats at the moment for the season so far. Liverpool, the top goal scorers, they've managed to net 57 goals so far this season with Manchester United in second with 54 Spurs, Arsenal, Man City they're all lacking in third, fourth and fifth if we have a look at our overview you can see top goal scorer is Romelu Lukaku he's managed to score 21 goals so far in the Premier League that is just fantastic I know some people struggle with Lukaku on FM, well I'm certainly getting the best out of him, you can see Harry Kane, Mo Salah well, Harry Kane's got 16, Mo Salah's got 11. Aubameyang seems to be enjoying life at the moment under new manager Unai Emery there at Arsenal. Luke Shaw with the best average rating. Well, he's uh, equal with Romelu Lukaku at the moment, but Luke Shaw has been phenomenal for us at left back. But I have been rotating him in some games with Ashley Young. And that's another thing with this series I wanted to mention was the fact that I want to try my best to work with what I've got. I want to try my best to work with some of the under 23 players to use that youth academy. I mean, you can see the under 23s at the moment absolutely blitzing their league in the uh, Premier Division 2 and the under 23s. They haven't lost a game yet. They've drawn six though. They're in fine form. If we look at the under 23s, such a great array of talent and I feel as though, you know, signing other players would just try and force them out. I mean, look at George Tanner is doing brilliant. Mason Greenwood, who seems to be getting all the headlines, all the limelight at the moment. And that's only fair enough. And he has featured in, well, it says two games there in the FA Cup, a Carabao Cup for the first team. Managed to get a goal as well in the FA Cup, which I was really impressed with. And I can't wait to see what else he has to offer for the first team going forward. So I'm just impressed what else can you say about Mason Greenwood is at the age of 17 his potential ability already up to five stars he's already scored 15 goals in non-competitive football and that's in 20 games that's not a bad record to have and if he keeps putting in the shifts then he's certainly going to be uh, in the first team in no time competing with the likes of Lukaku for a spot you can see the likes of uh, Fred and Small and don't worry they're not in the under 23s they've been chose to uh, to bring up their fitness in some upcoming under 23 games but players like Dylan Levitt, James Garner I definitely want to get them integrated in the first team I mean James Garner has been brilliant 44 games he's already played this season and he's scored three with nine assists Alou Traore again another player that's been brilliant in central midfield we have such an array of talent at the uh, at the club at youth academy level and we've still got the um, youth intake to look forward to as well which is round about March April time Ethan Layard another player that's been impressing lately 
He's a full back, but he's adding goals to his game as well recently, which is always good to see. Luke Shaw's scored quite a few bangers already. I'll have to show you that at some point. Probably um, at the end of the season, end of season awards. Tahith Chong is already featured in a handful of uh, first team games. Non-competitive though, is featured in 19, scored seven. You know, I, I definitely want to challenge myself this year on FM. I don't want to be, yes, I've got a budget of over 140 odd million and I could easily go out and spend it on world-class players, but I want to challenge myself. I want to work with what I've got. I know I said that on the last FM series I did with United and in the end I just scrapped that and went against what I said at the start. Well, that's not going to be the case this time around because of the players we have in the under-23s like Gomez, like Chong, like Laird and, and so on and Garner. I definitely want to use them. I definitely want to get them into the team and I definitely want this save to go on for, well, as long as possible, really. And I hope you guys will uh, continue to join me on this journey. So that is going to be about it for this first episode. That's the recap for the season so far. In the next episode, we will be kicking things off with that away game to Arsenal at the Emirates in the FA Cup fourth round. It's like real life, isn't it? And I hope to see you all there. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.